You might have a bachelor's in arts, you might have a master's degree, you might even have a PhD, but even those people who have a PhD are only gonna be a tenth of the way qualified to watch this tutorial. This is gonna be the hardest, the most complicated, the most advanced tutorial that I've done uh, to date. And without going into too much detail, there's actually quite a bit of pressure going on in this one. There's not a gun to my head, something actually far worse. I can't get into it, but by the way, uh, we do have a special guest star. Do you wanna say hello? Hello. This is the voice from the CG Matter tutorial, the part that sounded very coherent. And yeah, so again, I can't talk about why this is such a big deal, but there is massive incentive for me to get this fucking right. So uh, what is it that we are making in this most advanced tutorial? How hard can it be? Well, you can see right here, I have a image of a leaf. And this is just, let me actually get rid of these texture coordinates. Uh, this is just an image downloaded from Google Images. You know, I didn't like go outside, take a picture of a leaf mask around it, no. Uh, this is just a, you know, image from Google Images, yeah. An image from Google Images with an alpha channel, etc. And the hard part of this tutorial is creating this node that I'm gonna call scatter. Um, and you, I bet you can already guess what it does if you're, you know, big smarty pants man. Um, basically what happens when I connect this in here is it creates a scattering effect for whatever image that we're gonna input. So if I put a poker image, which is this one, we get poker chips scattered. Uh, if we do a leaf, we get this one and it works with any kind of geometry um, that basically has a UV map. So you could do it on a sphere, a torus, whatever. And, and this is kind of the important part, um, even though you have this kind of procedural effect with scattering and it's effectively random, we do have control um, over a lot of aspects of this. So we can control the scale. In other words, like the size of the leaves, how big this pattern is. Um, although if we zoom this out too far, it starts to look like a, eh, <laughs> look like a QR code. Uh, we do have other controls like the seed. This is just like a random effect. We can control the variation in scale uh, where when this is one, it all has the same scale and we can increase the variation to be something bigger. Uh, we also have this one, I don't know what it does, let's see. Uh, this is rotation, so we could rotate stuff by different quantities. This is like a rotation offset. And then finally, we have kind of like the bias or the distribution of leaves where when we have close to zero, it's gonna effectively be a grid, which is kind of a good hint for how this is gonna be made. So how is it that we make this kind of texture coordinate setup that we can plug into whatever image uh, that we want with an alpha channel? Find out! right now. <laughs> so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with a new Blender project. This is using 2.91, not 2.92, nothing advanced, just your run of the mill mom and pop shop 2.91. <laughs> I'm gonna start off by adding in a plane. This is where we are gonna make the material where everything's projected just on this plane. This is all the geometry that we're gonna need. So in some sense, we're halfway done with this tutorial. That's pretty exciting. Uh, rest of this is gonna be making a material. So in rendered mode, we are gonna create a material with texture coordinates being fed directly into here. And basically the name of the game is how do we get from this texture coordinates node point A to the material output point B. What is it that we put in between? What is the Krabby Patty secret formula to get from here, to, get from here to here? Okay, that's what we're gonna be talking about. So first thing we wanna do is plug in whatever image it is that we wanna be using. For me, that's gonna be a leaf. You could use whatever image you want. You know, you could use a leaf, a poker chip, a nude, really doesn't matter. I mean, ideally this thing has an alpha channel. Uh, in this case it does. And that's what we're gonna be using. So first of all, we are gonna be using either generated or UV coordinates. In this case, it doesn't really matter since it's a plane, these uh, texture coordinates are identical, uh, except for the fact that the Z component's missing. And again, we're about to get really fucking deep in here, like fist deep. Uh, so put on your math glasses, okay? So. Yes, we're going to be using UV. <laughs> Fine. We're going to be using UV coordinates, and we need to manipulate this so that we have repetition in our leaf. So there's not just one, but multiple. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use a vector math node set to scale. In other words, we're taking our input vector, a three-dimensional, but really two-dimensional, since the Z coordinate is muted. UV coordinates. We're taking this three-dimensional quantity, and we're scaling the vector by some scalar, or in other words, by some scale, right? And if we were to change this from a number that isn't one, this already gives us the repetition. And you might be thinking, oh, why is that, <laughs> why is that the case? We have one leaf, why is you know, scaling it down, doing all this? Uh, well, it's because our image, our image texture node is set to repeat. If you set this to clip, it does what you expect. Uh, so while that is a shortcut for repetition, we want to be able to manipulate each one of these independently from each other. So that's why we set this to clip. Okay, so how do we get this to repeat and not just get smaller? Well, uh, what we have right here is the texture coordinate setup from before just scaled down. What we really want is a tiled 
version of our UV coordinates, and that would do exactly what we want because in each tile we have one image node. Are you following so far? So far it's not too bad. To do this, what we are going to do is we are going to copy, so we have another vector math node, connect it to this chain, and set this one to, what do we set it to? There's so much on the line. We set it to fraction, because what's happening here is we have our UV coordinates, which right now go from 0 to 1, so on X, 0 to 1, on Y, bottom to top, 0 to 1, etc. Uh, when we scale this by, let's say, 5, now instead of going from the interval 0 to 1, it goes from 0 to 5 in both directions. And when we use the fraction, it's saying only keep everything after the decimal. So as we go from 0 to 5, we progress up to 1, and then when we pass 1, instead of having 1.1, it just rounds and gives us 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then every integer is kind of dropped off. So we just kind of, we kind of get this repeating 0 to 0.9 repeating pattern again and again and again. Okay, so if we take this and plug this in right here, then we now have our repeated image this time while it's still set to clip. And you're noticing, yeah, uh, if, if you're thinking, wow, EV really is dog shit. It's kind of like the worst thing you could wish on somebody. You're right. Uh, that is why we have this kind of line thing going across here because it doesn't like that fraction command uh, for some reason. So if you just switch over to cycles, which basically does the same math operation, uh, for some reason, it gets rid of it. Do I know why? No. <laughs> I'm sure somebody in the comments could enlighten us and you guys can all upvote him or downvote him. Fuck him. Okay. So now we have this repeating uh, pattern, but the idea of scattering is how do we make the scale non-uniform? How do we make the rotation non-uniform? How do we make everything about this non-uniform? Well, first of all, let's handle the scale. If we were to add in another scale node, in other words, the thing that changes the kind of the zooming of this image, we could uh, change this and it would do everything uniformly. And of course there is an issue that it's scaling it down to the origin, at least in the tiled sense. Uh, to the origin, so each of these uh, ver vertices or corners or whatever you want to call it, um, it's scaling down to there, uh, and we can fix that in a sec, but not only is that the issue, but it's scaling uniformly, whereas we want some things to get bigger, some things to get smaller, not everybody's created equal here. Um, well, first of all, before we handle that, let's just talk about this centering the scaling thing. To fix this, we don't want to scale to the origin, in fact, we want to scale halfway across our tile, so if this is 0, 0, and this is 1, 1 in the top right corner, we want the middle, which is 0.5 on the x, 0.5 on the y. We are really getting mathematical here. This might be an AP class level. What we're going to do is we are going to add in a addition vector math, and if we want to move our origin, or really do, if we want to move our center point of our tile down to the origin, we shift by negative 0.5 on x and y. So because it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we now have to use negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which isn't intuitive, no. It's not, but just live with it. So we subtract, and then after the scaling, we're gonna do the reverse, so. In other words, we are transforming everything from the corner to the middle, scaling, and then doing the reverse, so that now our scaling happens from the middle. And you can view this also in just uh, texture coordinates, so you can see what's happening here. So you can see we're doing this thing where it goes to the corner, but then it does the uh, correction with the addition and all that. So you can see what uh, the difference is there, okay? So now we can kind of have a bit more control over the scaling since now we have the scalar input that we can do whatever we want to. And the question is, how do we feed in not only one number, but multiple values? And the secret to this, the, the secret ingredient, the coup de gras, the tabula, not tabula rasa, the piece de resistance is going to be, yes. oh, what is it? Piece de it's called piece de resistance, apparently. Do you want to say that uh, loudly? Piece de I am so lucky to have somebody correct me on the fly, backseat tutorial making. I really want to say what's on the line, <laughs> but I can't. Uh, it involves a bathroom and being in there for a long time. What I'm going to be doing in there uh, to be disclosed if I fuck up. So, white noise node, add that in. Uh, this basically creates, once we use some texture coordinates, it creates a infinitesimally detailed noise texture that every point has a value between zero and one. It's randomly assigned. That's what white noise does, kind of like the flickering on your TV screen when your parents tell you you can't watch. I don't know. You know, sometimes you, you try to make a joke and you realize you're not funny. That's what's happening here. We have white noise. How do we take this and say not only... <laughs> How do we take this and say don't assign a random value to every point on the plane, instead assign a point to every one of these tiles? Well, instead of using fraction that takes this continuum and basically alters it, we want to make this discrete. So let's just duplicate this over. And this time, instead of fraction, we're going to set it to something like floor, ceiling, 
rounding. Basically, you can choose whatever it is you want to do here. I think even maximum and minimum might work, although actually, I don't, I don't think those work, so maybe floor or ceiling. Um, basically, this is a function that when we feed in our scale, so we still want to, whoops, uh, we still want to scale our texture coordinates so that we have five or however many tiles. Uh, once we do this, the ceiling function basically says, take this number and round it up to the nearest integer on X, Y, and Z. Long story short, we now have a vector unique to every single tile where there's no continuum. It's not changing along the tile. Um, it's just a single value. So if we plug this in as our texture coordinates, now the white noise is forced to take a value, to take a side, to take a stance on every single one of these tiles. And in other words, what we've done here is created a pretty basic system that gives us a number, in other words, a scaling value, hint, 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 foreshadowing. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna give us a number, a scaling value for each one of our tiles. So let's just connect that in and see what it gives us. Okay, so now we have, you know, I don't wanna vomit, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, however, it's not correct. We do have scaling on every single one, but it is scaling again. Each uh, tile is gonna take a value between zero and one, uh, where in scaling, if you scale by 0.5, it gets twice as big. It's kind of a reciprocal relationship. Uh, because of this, some stuff is very zoomed in. You're kind of looking at the fibers. <laughs> You're looking at the fibers of the leaves here. So we kind of want to set up a reciprocal relationship or maybe just add in a map range node, gives us even more control. And instead of going from zero to one to zero to one, a identity transformation. Yes, I am trying to use some like, complicated math words to weed out the fucking noobs, get out of here. Um, instead of using a zero to one to zero to one, in fact, we wanna go from one to two. So one means don't do anything, scale it by one, uh, you know, don't have it zoom in or out or anything. Go from this up to two, where two, uh, what, two <laughs> what two does is it has the potential to be up to twice as small. And the bigger this value is, uh, the smaller, or rather the more variation we have in our scale, okay? So right now, what do we have? We have control, and we should probably set up some value nodes to control this kind of stuff. Uh, we can control kind of the, kind of how much or the resolution or maybe just the quantity of leaves we have, basically the scaling of this tiling. We can control that. We can also control this last um, input right here on the map range. In other words, the variation. So you wanted this to be a number one or above, although you can go below, although then it would start to zoom in a bit. Is the cat in here? <laughs> Never mind. Um, you can control <laughs> you can control that as well. And now um, some other things we want to control is, for example, the seed value, which is going to end up <laughs> driving a lot more. Uh, so you could set this to four dimensional noise that gives us this do. Eh. God damn it! You know, sometimes sometimes <laughs> you try your best and you don't succeed. I am sweating bullets here. If you if you were to measure how much sweat there is on my chair right now, there'd be enough to get a couple drinks of water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you could add in four dimensional noise, which is gonna add basically a seed value that basically everything still works. Um, but you know, now we have a W slider. <laughs> That's pretty dank. Uh, we're gonna add that in as well. And some final pieces of control we'd like to have is rotation, uh, the orientation of our leaves, and then also, you know, maybe not every single one of these slots should have a leaf, so some of these should be blacked out, and we're gonna control that as well. But rotation um, used to be very complicated. You need to, you used to be, a, you used to have to make a matrix of sines and cosines and trigonometry that you don't wanna deal with. Um, luckily now there's a vector rotate node that we can just add in, although you could do this with a um, mapping node as well. And what the, <laughs> what the vector rotate node does is it gives us this angle slider that is going to rotate everything. Again, we don't wanna rotate from the origin. This is the center point, the origin. We wanna rotate from the middle of each tile, which again is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and the Z coordinate is suppressed. So now we can rotate from the middle. And in the same way that we wanted our scaling from before to be non-uniform, so we added this kind of map range node um, situation, we wanna do the same thing for the angle so it's not uniform everywhere. So luckily, we can just take this white noise texture, plug it in. I think technically does it in radians, maybe not, but Basically, this gives us a nice amount of variation that we can then drive or basically alter using some multiplication. So we're gonna set this to multiply and this will add a good amount of variation. And you can also do an offset using addition that rotates everything together. Um, so now we have something that can rotate it together. My original node setup didn't even have this, but you could either rotate it together or you could have some variation and separation. So you can see this one's not rotating, whereas this one is quite a bit. Wonderful, Wonderland is a train stop. Okay, <laughs> so now we have 
this uh, tiling, we have the scaling, we have the rotation, and we should probably add some value nodes just to control those quantities. So this can be our multiplication value. This can be our addition offset value. And then finally, and this is actually surprisingly easy, easy this part, how do we take some nodes, not some nodes, how do we, fuck, how do we take some tiles, suppress them, and take other tiles and not suppress them, okay? Well, what we can do is we can use this white noise that we've been using again and again and again. So this one node is carrying us for pretty much this whole thing. We're getting a lot of bang for our buck. This might even be worth quite a few bucks. You can think of these values as transparency values. So you could just like mix this with a transparent BSDF uh, where some tiles are more or less transparent, but probably something that makes more sense is we want some tiles to be opaque and some of them to be fully gone. So not this zero to one gradient in discreteness, but uh, we want it where it's either zero or one. And luckily there's an easy way to do that. Add a greater than math node and connect this right here. So that it's looking at our white noise and it's saying, if we set this to 0.5, which tiles are larger than 0.5 and which of them are less than 0.5 and it's gonna assign one or zero correspondingly. And the nice thing about this is we can actually alter this so that we could either have all the tiles be gone or all of them be there, right? So that's the nice thing about this. How do we incorporate this in? Um, one kind of technique that I don't recommend is we could use a mix RGB. So we could literally take this kind of setup, mix it, not a mix shader, a mix RGB. How did I not spot that? That's a bad Where's Waldo situation. You could either take this uh, image and mix it with the color black according to this factor, effectively this factor that we created. And that works, but then of course our alpha channel isn't corresponding to this. And yeah, you know, you could repeat this again, this time with the alpha channel and you set that to black and use the factor so that now we have the alpha and this. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it, and by the way, this is the correct way to do it. I'm gonna show you a shortcut. One of those things your teacher doesn't want to show you because, well, then the class wouldn't take 50 minutes, right? Um, the kind of clever way to do this that isn't that good is what we can do is for those tiles where we want it gone, we could actually scale down our texture coordinates to sample a single point, specifically the origin where it is black, and then that effectively does the same thing as long as your image doesn't have anything here. Let me show you what I mean, and then you'll understand. By the way, just for a visualization, this is what we have going on right now. So we have our texture coordinates, uh, we scaled them, we did this tiling, we then did some scaling situation where some are brighter than others. Actually, we did that. And then we did some rotation corresponding to these sliders that are effectively just changing the seed and then other stuff about it, right? And then we just plug this into an image. The image is kind of like, like the last step. What a ramble that was. What was I talking about? I was talking about scaling down to the origin. So the trick, the unethical, kind of the poop hole loophole of the node world is gonna be adding in a scale node at the very end. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> adding in a scale node. <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is use this greater than uh, to plug this in uh, right here. So what's this gonna do? What it's gonna do is it's gonna take this situation and scale by either one or zero, <laughs> where one is saying don't do anything to this tile and zero is saying scale it down specifically to the origin, scale everything to the vector zero, 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 which is gonna be the corner, uh, which, you know, the leaf isn't sampled there. So it, it effectively works. Hopefully you understand what, what am I talking about? You guys all have PhDs your leaders in your field if you're watching this deep into it. You know what's going on. Uh, this is kind of not the way to do it. Again, the poop hole loophole way to, <laughs> poop hole loophole way to do it. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> this is a weird way to do it, but it does work. So once you have your whole node set up and let's also add in a value node to control, again, what we might call the bias, the toe bias, the bias. <laughs> let's connect this in right here. Um, and again, this is basically saying uh, this is basically controlling the greater than node co corresponding to our white noise. Um, this is gonna say, do we want all our texture coordinate tiles or only some of them, etc. cetera. Uh, once you have all this, what we are going to do is select everything here, maybe even the texture coordinates, although you might wanna change UV coordinates to something else later. So maybe don't select that, that's up to you. Select all of these, control G to group them. So now you have a node like we did before and we have all these sliders, which we can actually delete so we can actually put in values right here. How many actuallys can I say per second? One, 10, 100, 1,000? We'll find out. We basically have this node group that you can plug in whatever image you want. You could plug this into whatever image you want. So again, the poker chips, uh, the leaves, you could even plug in full pictures and videos. Technically it works, it wouldn't make much sense. 
Although maybe you want to hypnotize somebody, maybe you want to get a new cult member, maybe that's a way to do it. Um, you could plug in whatever image you want. Again, these both work because we don't have anything. If we were to eliminate this, we don't have anything in the corner uh, because of that scaling trick because we didn't do mix RGB. Um, let's do a final review of this shit show that I desperately want, <laughs> desperately want to end. What we have is the texture coordinates where you can plug whatever you want into this. Um, although you might need to do a transform if you do something like object coordinates or whatever, but it seems to work, uh, which is what lets us, by the way, plug this into whatever um, geometry we want as long as it has UV coordinates. And we could even do a bit of manipulation before it even arrives to our node group. So by the way, this is looking a bit stretched um, along the Y axis. So what we could do, or no, is it the Z axis? Y axis is what it is. Uh, so you scale like this just to get your leaves to be a bit uh, fuller. You see before it was kind of shrunk down. Uh, but after, after we do our adjustment, it works like this. And what sliders do we have? We have the scaling, in other words, the density, how many leaves we're going to have per unit area. We are going to have, what's this one? This is going to be the scale variation where when it's set to one, all the leaves are the same. But you can see why it's important to have this kind of slider. We also have our seed, and this is just gonna generally control um, all the other sliders as well, like the rotation and all that. We have our rotation variation, or is this offset? It's one of the two. I think this one's offset and the other one's variation, so some of them spin, some of them don't. And then finally, we have this kind of bias slider, where again, the W affects all of this, which is the nice thing. And you can do this with whatever image. Whew, I'm feeling good. You know, I ran a marathon before. You know, you know how, do you know how some, let me, let me try this one more time. How do you know somebody ran a marathon? They'll tell you. So I ran a marathon before and the satisfaction I got by finishing that race is nothing compared to finishing this, my God. Um, hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. Um, this was, I don't think it was honestly that bad. You know, I'll, I'll just reveal the whole issue. I had a competition with a, a great friend, a great ally, maybe an enemy. And we said that I have a challenge to do this in one take. She had a challenge to do something else. And whoever failed is going to have to sleep in the bathroom, like on the fucking hard surface tile, you know, tiling that has to do with this. Uh, for eight hours, like midnight to 8 a.m., I was not looking forward to breaking my neck. But instead, I stuck out my neck um, on this one. It was all on the line. And I'm glad I don't have to do that. Fucking hell. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want access to exclusive tutorials that, thank you for the popcorn. Uh, if, if you want access to exclusive tutorials that are not posted for free, you know, not handout tutorials, Patreon exists, you could find them there. You're also gonna find behind the scenes stuff. You are also gonna find what else? Discord access, project files. I'll make sure to upload this node group there. Uh, if you don't wanna make this yourself and you want access to all the sliders without naming them, I'll make sure to take care of that too. Um, all that exists on Patreon. I want to thank the 500-some people who are already on there. You guys are saints, angels, demons. No, not demons. You're angels. Thank you. This is the end of the show. I'm out of here. See you.